everyone, and welcome back to, let's say, our victory lap of Killer7, because that's basically what Hopper7 is. It's the game giving you a victory lap after beating Killer8, so it's time to, to put an end to Killer7 by playing Hopper7, which is a really weird thing. <laughs> As we saw last time, it says we need to face the swarm. What is this horrific new heaven smile that has awakened? Let's find out. Now, there's not going to be any new story material or anything like that. In fact, this isn't going to extend past the first level. Angel. There's just one very particular specific difference with Hopper 7. I'm just going to skip past this scene right here, because it doesn't have anything new for us. And we also know about this, the free-for-all fight. That's the third time we've been seeing it. Assignment number 33, destroying the Heaven Smile headquarters and capturing the Chief alive. But maybe there's something a little bit different about the Heaven Smiles this time. Well, let's walk forward. Let's turn into Dan. And let's, uh... Let's take a look at that scene where Dan first encounters a heaven smile. I don't want to go any further. It's dangerous. My friends are all dead. They were all murdered by people that look like this. I have been chosen. <laughs> yeah, that's the difference. That's the only difference. The Heaven Smiles have been turned into whatever those are. Hopper Men. They're extremely easy enemies. Their entire body is their weak point. And we're, we're fighting them. Here, now, is what we're doing in Hopper 7. We don't have young Harmon Smith anymore. We're down to our original Persona. We don't really need Harmon, however. For these guys. I mean, look what he's- what is he wearing? Like a striped shirt, he's wearing shorts, he has like a grasshopper head on there. It doesn't actually matter where I aim. So I can just do this. Just use the D-pad for automatic aiming. But this is what we're doing, this is how we're gonna close out Killer7. It's the last thing the game has for us to do. As we enter the parking garage, which... Really is probably the first problem that people have with Killer7. I forget if I really mentioned it before, but hold on, let me just take out take out this guy. But it seems to me that most people when they first play Killer7, they get a negative opinion of it. And one reason for that There we go. One reason for that is this section, because no one can seem to figure out what to do when they get this duplicator right here. And they kind of just hit this wall and give up at the game. And they say, what is this thing? This is stupid. I don't like this. this is too easy. That's not the opinion people have. They do not think it is too easy, Dan. They think it doesn't make too much sense. And that's actually was the same with me when I played this game for the first time. One, two, three. First time I played this game, I got stuck right here. Had no idea what to do. And then I just put the game down and played something else. A while back, I came back to this. A while, not a while back, but a while after that, I came back to this. Give it another, another shot. But it seems to me that a lot of people who play this game get here, they don't know what to do, it's confusing, and then they just put it down right here. So this, this is the big wall, I think, for beginners. I mean, Iwazuru does tell you what to do, but everything's presented in such a strange way that I don't think you really absorb the information. At least I didn't. Like, he tells you you need, to, you need the, the vials of blood, and that you need to use the collateral shot. But you don't really know what he's talking about. And I think, you know, I've been singing the praises of Killer7. I, I like Killer7 a whole lot. It's one of my favorite games ever. But there are... You know, the game design is not perfect. There are moments like this where you think... Probably some game testing could have helped with that. Could have so 
prevented that from happening. Couldn't pre prevent this from happening. Let's look what's gonna happen to this guy. Yep. <laughs> the same thing that happened. It's just that Heaven Smile was replaced with the Hopper Man. Not to be confused with Killer Man, the Hopper Man is nowhere near as fearsome. Because, of course, we can just do that to them. Yeah, so there are some sections in the game that maybe some, some more playtesting would have helped out with. Like that part with the duplicator smile that everyone gives up on. I'm glad I didn't give up on it, though. You know, there is a... You know, there is a temptation when you play a game and you have trouble with it right away that, of course, you're going to play, the, play it in the game. You're going to say, this is stupid. I'm not having fun. I don't want to continue with this. Um, and, of course, I do that plenty of times as well. You gotta help me. Only to discover, perhaps, if you give it another shot, try to do something that you didn't think of before. And, you know, maybe it turns out to be a lot better than you thought it was going to be. <laughs> this is too easy. And now Dan is completely correct. At this point, it really is too easy. I mean, after going through Killer 8, in which everyone is a lot harder, the difficulty is ratcheted up, then it gives you Copper 7, and it's just like, okay, this is now going to be incredibly easy. All the enemies are going to get killed in one hit. Uh, just do it. And everyone's grasshoppers for some reason. I'm, I mean, yes, the joke is grasshopper manufacture made the game. So I guess really the person we're fighting is the grasshopper logo. That person who appears in the grasshopper logo at the beginning of grasshopper manufacture games. I guess that's who we're supposed to be fighting here. It's one of the weirder bonuses that I can remember seeing in a game. <laughs> this is too easy. <laughs> this is too easy. This is too easy. This is too easy. I remember when I first played through this game, I really did find the gameplay to be a slog. I mean, really, the, the, the shooting controls are not great when you first play it. You, you get used to it. But at first, I mean, there were plenty of games that did it better, even back then. And if you play it today, I mean, first-person shooting is a gameplay style that has undergone many, many iterations, has been polished to an extreme degree in the modern day. So, Killer 7s might not hold up. Certainly will not hold up, really. Um, but I felt that the gameplay is kind of a slog, but I'm finding everything about the game to be so interesting. <laughs> I just have to keep going. I have to see what happens next. This is too easy. Oh, did not mean to talk to you, Wazaru. Let's put the fire ring on. That's actually not what I need to open the door. I need Coyote to open the door. So I just felt I really want to keep watching this story and see what happens and figure out what's going on, even though I'm not really following it at all. But everything seems so interesting and it's so stylish that even though I'm not having fun with the shooting, um, I'm really I'm being compelled forward <laughs> because everything else about it is so strong. I mean, now... I really don't have a problem, any problem with the gameplay itself. I mean, I've played the game... Really a bunch. So the shooting is not really a problem for the most part. So I don't really... That, ha that hasn't been a problem for me for a while. So, I mean, I enjoy playing the game at this point. I actually do enjoy the shooting now. But, of course, I mentioned it before. It is a shame that there is no chance of ever getting any kind of remake in which perhaps the shooting might be polished up. And I think I mentioned it before that I always felt that a big 
wasted opportunity was that there was never a Wii version of this game. Because it would have been really easy to port this game to the Wii, since it was a GameCube game. And then the shooting could have been done with, like, you know, pointing the Wiimote at the screen, right? That would have been an interesting twist on the gameplay. Maybe it would have made things too easy, if you could just aim manually. But then again, the Wii version of Resident Evil 4 was certainly too easy. <laughs> and people like that. And people do like it when your character is overpowered, rather than underpowered. <laughs> Forgot to scan before I shot him. I mean, people would- I think most- for the most part, people do prefer if aiming is too easy, rather than being too hard. Toilet flushed. Toilet has been flushed both in the level and, you know, the game in general, since we've completed it. We have flushed Suda51's toilet. And what did we get? Well, in the game, we get an odd engraving. And in real life, we get fun. We get enjoyment. From completing Killer7. <laughs> I'm glad that all the characters now can do the thing that uh, the Bloody Heartland did in the final chapter. Where you just shoot enemies repeatedly without even having to aim. It's amazing when you think about that this game was actually made. They do say that a big reason it was made was because Mikami was basically protecting Suda. Mikami wanted Suda to make 100% the game he wanted to make, and Mikami was basically covering for him with Capcom management. And that seems to be the only explanation for how something like this could have been made in the year uh, 2005. Because <laughs> if you're a big AAA developer like Capcom, and you're putting your big budget into a game like this, and it's it's a high-profile promoted game as being a GameCube exclusive, even though it wasn't exclusive in the end, this is really a daring thing to put that promotion behind. I mean, Resident Evil 4, certainly that was the safe one. Uh, this is completely the opposite of safe. Get out of the way! What is this thing? <laughs> what is that thing indeed? And of course, when it came out, people just didn't know what to make of the game, because... I mean, it could just completely f flew in the face of what you might expect from pretty much anything coming out at the time. Is it a shooter? Well, I mean, you don't walk around, you just press a button to move forward and back. Is it an adventure game? Not really, because, you know, the puzzles are really easy. Eh, that guy's running away. Fuck you! Is it a story-based game? Yes, but no one knows what the story is. Is there voice acting? Yeah, but a lot of it is so distorted to the point that you can't hear it. Is there a cool playable character? Yeah, I mean, several. And, like, they, they kind of transform into each other, they explode into blood, and you have, like, seven people who is actually one person. You're an assassin who is several people at once, is who the character is. Yes, doesn't it? <laughs> is there a, a cool supporting cast? Yeah, you have, like, an assistant who is a ghost in, like, a gimp suit who, f who comes down from the ceiling on a bungee cord and gives you advice 
and then he goes back up his bungee cord. You can assume that Suda did not have to pitch any part of this game at all to Capcom management. Because any part of this probably... Probably would have gotten a no, just like that lock said. No, maybe don't do that. No, maybe we won't be spending our money on that. And then when the game did not do as well as it needed to do, well, I guess Capcom was only too eager to say that they were just going to sit on this forever. <laughs> but who knows? Maybe enough time has passed. <laughs> I mean, people have mentioned that Suda has said that he would like to do a remake, but of course he would say that. What, would he, was he going to say that he doesn't want to do it? No, of course he would like to do it. It's not him that's the issue. The issue is whether or not Capcom would have any interest in doing that. But as you've seen throughout this LP, um, the game, just the, the game, the Bare Bones game itself, Bare Bones GameCube game, still looks gorgeous when you up the resolution like this without any additional work at all done. You can imagine what it might look like if there was an actual HD remaster done instead of just up upresing a GameCube game. Well, it's interesting to think about, but really that's all we can do is think about it because it likely will not happen. I mean, we can only th be thankful that people work on emulators like Dolphin so we can play a game, play the game like this. So you don't quite have to just imagine what it could be. You do have options in front of you. Considering how good the game looks, even when it came out on the 480i GameCube, kind of surprising that m more games didn't try to go with this style. I mean, I think I've mentioned that before, but you certainly do have cell shaded games, but nothing quite in this style. Now, something that you might notice is that the critical points do not appear on the enemies in Killer 8. Sorry, in Hopper 7, it has that similarity with Killer 8. Not that it matters for the most part, but in the case of the Speed Smile here, we cannot see his weak point. We know where it is. It's under his jaw, because that's where it always is. Well, that was a close one. He almost got to me. I mean, usually Khan is able to just take him out with bullets just before he's able to... I mean, regardless of whether I shoot his weak point. But that time, he almost got here. That would, would have been weird, dying on Hopper 7. And now we approach the top floor. I guess no more hoppers, since there are no more regular Heaven Smiles. It would be neat if Angel had taken on Grasshopper characteristics. Spoiler, she does not. She is still just Angel. Oh, and something that some people had noticed. Let's talk to Travis, because he does mention something here. He does call us Amir. And ag again, this is just the beginning of the game, but of course, if this is your first time through the game, you have no idea what anything is or what he's talking about. Or who Amir might be. An interesting thing, though, is that he says the other chief must, must be rolling on the floor with laughter. So, not only Travis giving us a hint about Amir, but he does seem to be indicating that there is more than one Harmon Smith. He mentions that the chief will wake up and the other chief is rolling on the floor with laughing. 
laughing. I assume the chief is old Harmon and the other chief probably young Harmon, but who can say really? I'm the but I guess Travis himself knew that there was more than one. I don't think he ever mentions that anywhere else. Anyway, I wish Angel just had like a big old grasshopper head. Don't change the model at all, just put the head over her head. They, unfortunately, that does not happen. You think you killed me? Better think again. <laughs> Just something I wanted to try. Let's fight Angel using Kevin. Because Kevin does not... His hand doesn't waver when he's aiming his knives. So that might be useful against Angel. Oh, I tried to be cool and do, like, do this backflip, and that did not work. Oh, hold on. Her back is... Back was exposed. Not anymore. Tried to be cool. Backflip out of the way of the fire. Not happening. And that was easy enough. Probably the hardest one to do that with, I'm gonna guess, is Mask. You have to shoot the faces exactly, exactly on with the, the grenade launchers. Area of effect does not work on her. Hold on. Yeah, it just struck me. I never actually did that animation in the game. But he can, t he can turn it around. He can turn his wheelchair around. It's just that you never have to. You don't have to do that. But the animation for it is here. And I would love it if Kun Lan was a grasshopper man, too. Because, I mean, the heaven smiles come from him and his god hand. Or rather, he should lift up his god hand, and his god hand is actually a grasshopper hand. It just looks like a grasshopper man, and that is what his hand is. Unfortunately, that is not happening. What is happening is, well, you you know. You know what it is. We're shooting him in his, hot, in his hand. His big glowing hand. There he goes. Out of there. Uh to the top of that tower. It's Kunlan's favorite ride. Did you notice that he doesn't catch the bullet in his god hand? He put, he raises his other hand, his left hand, and catches it. Just, just a little weird thing about the animation there. But he doesn't actually catch it in his glowing hand. But that's the end of Hopper 7. And that's actually the end of Killer 7. Because Hopper 7 is the final mode. It's the bonus mode. And with that, with its completion, Killer 7 is That's it. That's the end. We finished Hopper 7. And like it said right there, it said complete. There's nothing else. We completed Hopper 7, Killer 8, Killer 7, all three done. 
And as I mentioned, a heaven smile might be sitting beside you right now. And maybe, maybe that's me. Maybe I'm your heaven smile sitting next to you right now as you watched Killer7. And you're my heaven smile. Us laughing together at acts of extreme violence and bloodshed. As you do, as that's what you laugh at. Well, I guess this is indeed the end of Killer7. Everything's done. Everything's been seen. Everything's been played. So I hope you've enjoyed going through Killer7 with me. I wanted to play this, like I said at the beginning, for a long time. Uh, I mean, I played this for the first time before I started LPing. And from the very beginning, this was a game that I wanted to do. Um, I forget if I mentioned it, but that uh, I was either going to, all those years ago, I was either going to do this one or Ill Bleed, and I went with Ill Bleed, and then I just never got to Killer7 for one reason or another. But I felt that now was the time. Uh, this was one of the, maybe one of, maybe the final game from my original list of games that I really wanted to LP because it's one of my favorites and I just wanted to play it and I wanted to show it for you. Of course, many of you had already seen the game. You already knew what was in store. You knew what was coming. And I hope you enjoyed watching this as well because I did it for you as well. And like I said back at the beginning of the playthrough, it's amazing about how you can get a game that a lot of people just think is terrible. When I bought the game at GameStop, the clerk said that this is one of the worst games he ever played, and he predicted that I would be coming back to get my money back. Because, of course, how could anyone enjoy something like this? And at first, I wasn't really liking it, because in the first level, I got to that duplicator smile in the parking garage, just couldn't figure out what to do, and I was thinking, man, this is kind of stupid, let me play something else. But I didn't return it, and I got back to it, and kept playing it, and became interested, and became intrigued continued playing through it, and it eventually ended up becoming one of my favorite games ever. So that's it for Killer7. Can't really think of anything else to do, so I guess, really, that is all there is to it. To it. Doesn't make sense to end that sentence at two. Unless there was a Killer7 2, there is not... And there never will be. I mean, there have been games made by Grasshopper, perhaps in the style of Killer7, like Killer is Dead. Uh, in my opinion, Killer is Dead does not come anywhere close to Killer7. Um, I was kind of ended up kind of being disappointed by that one. Uh, but maybe my expectations were a bit high, being of how much I like Killer7. But I guess I shouldn't quite say that it's over yet, because there still is one more supplemental video to go. One more supplemental where we're going to talk about Jaco's reports, those reports that we've been seeing at the end of each of these videos. So there is at least that piece that we still have to do. But as far as the game itself goes, as far as Killer7 the game goes, it's all over now. It's all done. I hope you've enjoyed watching it with me. And I hope you enjoy watching this final Jayco report because there are 26 in total and we are on part 26 right now. So let's end this video with the last Jayco report. I hope you've enjoyed watching Killer7. I'll see you around. This is the last tape. I only want to tell the truth. Here, I'm tired of this maligned world. I'm off to kill Kunlan myself. The real Kunlan, the one with a physical body, like a normal man, now lives in a special cell underground Atlanta, Georgia. He lived there, under the US government's care. I heard that he is little more than a shadow of his former self, a senile old man. The government must have a good reason for keeping him around. I can't forgive him, though. No, this is the last time, so, with the voice of truth, with my own voice, I shall tell you, Amir Parkina, can you recognize who I am? This voice, do you remember it? 
the real me was always beside you.